Hey, hey. <laughs> you got your Mr. White, white Chocolate, chocolate Mocha. Mocha. That's me. <laughs> I was expecting one on my birthday from you via something. Something, something. You never know. Your day, the day's not over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know some people like to have a birthday for a whole week and the whole month, but I, I got you today. You seem like the type to have the whole month birthday. Is that true? You know, that's true. When I in my thirties, I was very much a birthday all month kind of guy, and then I downsized it to Virgo season. But then I was like, wait a minute, Virgo is like that's a whole month too. <laughs> so now I'm like, I'll do a weekend or I'll do four days. But this year, I plan on working on my birthday, so this is going to be a first. Ethan Sanchez gave me my early birthday present. He guessed I was 36 years old, so there you go. Hey, hey. Was way off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't look a day over 36, I'll tell you that. One man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are you going to tell us a little more about yourself? Oh, you want me to say stuff? All right. So, yeah. Um, so everybody calls me KG. Nobody calls me Kevin anymore. Uh, somehow my last name went from Guardy to Sells, but here we are. That's what people call me these days. Um, uh, I just celebrated my seven year anniversary at KW. About I, On LinkedIn, it came up, so it must be official that day. Uh, <laughs> I was getting a lot of messages. I was like, what anniversary is it? Yes, KW. So man, it's gone fast. It's been great. Uh, quick story, I used to have a Froyo shop in Whitefish Bay. We had soup, sandwiches, Froyo, gelato. Uh, Maureen had just started the market center there, which was like a one or two minute walk from it. So they were actually my core base of customers coming in to get lunch. I remember Andy Stillman coming in a lot. Uh, sometimes they couldn't get there, so they'd call me like, hey, can you deliver some sandwiches and soups? I'm like, absolutely. And then the next thing you know, uh, Rick Stale was in there one day and he's like, well, what's your GCI? And he was using all these terms. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, so something clicked. I was like, I got to be somewhere else because I'm not learning this stuff. And then next thing you know, I was at KW. Making dreams come true. Yep, I remember walking into KW and they had like the ALC people that were on the A. Back then they had a few people on the ALC, believe it or not, even though they're just starting. Um, I was like, who are those people? And then they told me, I was like, I want to be there one day. And here we are, a couple years yeah. ago, started to be on there. Uh, so it's been a great ride. Well, that's exciting. And I'm really, really, well, of course, you're one of the funnest people in the office. And I miss you out here in the North Shore, as you know. It'd be so easy to hand those uh, coffees off to you if you were in the house, but it's, <laughs> instead you're across town, so. Correct. Uh, yeah. I was making it difficult, but love you anyways. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna put five minutes on the clock. Are you ready to shine? I'm ready to answer stuff, shine hopefully. <laughs> I doubt you're gonna get out of this without shining. <laughs> All right, let's go. What do we got? If you could live in a sitcom, which would it be and why? It would be definitely The Office. I would want my desk next to Dwight Schrute and I would want to be Jim Halpert. I could definitely pick up that vibe from you. So true. <laughs> so, office would be the first choice and I would probably Seinfeld would be second. They would have to create a role for me because, you know, <laughs> I could be, I don't know what I'd be, but so uh, Office for sure, Seinfeld second. Too original. <laughs> I'm the KG the man. Yeah. <clears throat> the man with the plan. <laughs> and you're growing a team. What's the secret sauce to the uh, Enlightened Realty? And what makes Enlightened Realty different from the rest? Um, secret sauce, I would say, is the planning that goes into creating the team. Doing a lot of the legwork ahead of time, getting your system set up ahead of time, knowing what they're going to encounter, and uh, removing as many obstacles as possible before you even say, hey, I'm forming the team, and hey, you're on it, right? So mm -hmm. having everything in place, uh, all your systems, having the support, and everything, so when you sign somebody, the onboarding you know is gonna go well. 
Uh, there's no confusion and uh, to make it a smooth transition to help them from individual to team, laying out the roadmap, setting the expectations and um, helping them understand, all right, this is a day in the life of what we do. And if you want to be on this team, this is what your day has to look like. So I think that's the secret sauce. And then as far as the growth, which has happened really quick, you know, we've been, I think, where we've been like months, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we got, we're up to 10 teammates. Um, the culture is a big part of it. So we have a, a strong culture. We have a fun culture. You got to have fun in this business. You can't take yourselves too seriously. You have to be accountable. Um, if you can see the text group that we have and some of the stuff, <laughs> that comes up, uh, I won't share everything on here, but um, it's productive. <laughs> it's fun. It's growth. You know, uh, it's so many things and so many different people. I, we have such a diverse team that is i mean you've got you know you got new agents you got seasoned agents you got ethnicities obviously and i think that's what's fun about it because we're not all oh, i'll be political can i be unpolitically correct we're just not a bunch of white guys like hey, we hit it's just a fun group and a good mix of people i hope i said that right <laughs> that's incredible no it all it equals out the success and i think diversity empowers that truly there's a lot more that you can do with diversity than just keeping things you know just the same old way you know right. um but here's a question though Okay. How do you get in the way of all that success? How do you get in the way of all your in your own success? How do you get in the way of it? Uh, mm -hmm. Overthinking things, um, trying to recreate the wheel, um, not knowing, and this is things I don't do, but if I was to get in my way, this would happen. Uh, you know, uh, not knowing your 10 people all have different personalities and they have different learning styles, right? So the way you coach one person, you don't coach the other. Um, stuff I see get in the way of, you know, they rise up and then the, the teams end up falling apart because you lose track of your cultures, which is what you um, created in the first place. Sometimes people grow too fast. I mean, you just have to have a pulse on your people, what motivates them and uh, how you can best support them and when to check in with them. What's something in the, pa the pandemic has taught you about managing your business? That's a good one. Um, that you don't always have to be at a kitchen table to get a listing. <laughs> <laughs> right? True. Let's face it. Some people still aren't. I mean, many aren't, but some people aren't quite comfortable always meeting a new person. So, you know, they. I've done some Zoom meetings. You know, it, I, if it's up to me, I'm at their kitchen table and being able to meet them. But I you know I adjust to what they want. It's not about me. It's about them. Uh, so the pandemic, you know, one, I was thrilled that we were um, ne necessary workers, right? That showed us something. But everybody else yep. was staying home. I was driving on the freeway by myself going to listing appointments. <laughs> right? But the pandemic, uh, it taught me to be more resourceful and, you know, treat, really look at each potential client for what they are and not the same. What's one thing? Oh, this is the final question, by the way. We have right. no more time on the clock, where we're going. Uh -oh. What's the one thing you've done but will never do again? Gosh. <laughs> Um, do I have to go back to KGBC and tell you what I was like before then or what? <laughs> and I was a street hustler, you know, I know I'll never do that again. You have to see some old pictures from the archives to see what I used to be. Uh, but I definitely will not go back to that lifestyle ever again. Even if I go dead broke in real estate, you will not catch me doing those activities again. Some of them have special <laughs> limitation type things, so I can't get into all of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. That hustler life. We'll just keep that in a different chapter. We, we won't reopen right. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was KGBC. Well, birthday boy, I'm going to let you continue with your day. Thank you so much for your time. I so much fun. It. I knew you would be a blast to do a 5 and 5 with, so I'm glad we yeah, got to do this. If you ever want to do a 20 and 20, hit me up. I'm <laughs> 20 minutes? Okay. Yeah. Was like, God, like some of the people I speak with, I'm like, this should really be 60 minutes. This would be a whole hour of just chit chat because it's so helpful and nourishing knowing, you know, getting to know agents a little bit more on a personal side than just being like, my closing, you know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's, very, it's, been, it's been really nice doing this, so. Well, I believe, are you the creator of this? Yeah. 
So thank you for doing it because it's helped me know who the people I work with are better. So good idea and thank you. And it's fun. You're so fun. <laughs> Likewise. And don't get too crazy tonight. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. bye. All right. Bye. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> That's right. it. You're, you're free to go. <laughs> I'm going to hit the red hang up later. Okay. Bye.